How does a girl juggle being a ninja and being a regular girl? Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues and I break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then I read it dramatically back to you, all alterations to the panelist text and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. Now this is the story about a Biki, and I want to let you know because it takes place in Japan, there's a lot of Japanese names. While I did look up the pronunciations to these, I've discovered in the past before that there are a lot of pronunciations, and I butcher them anyway. So I'm apologizing right now. Somewhere hidden in Japan, a ninja gives his report on locating Enjo the Renegade. He tells his superiors that he is close, but that's when they stop him. Close is not good enough. We need results, and they dismiss him. They have other important matters, but they are the Geki. Over in the Glade of Ninja, Abiki begins her morning training with her friend Yata and her teacher Senjo. Everything is going well until Abiki's cell phone rings. Without delay, Senjo quickly grabs Abiki and takes her phone. He tells her that these types of items are forbidden in the Glade of the Ninja. She is allowed to go to school with the non-ninjas, she can eat foods that are not on the ninja diet, and she even has more clothes than any of the other ninja students. So why must she break this one rule on technology? Abiki just wants to be a normal girl. She wants to leave the Glade, go to university, and the only thing that she's been doing is training to be a ninja. Sanjo gives Abiki back her phone because she bought it, but she needs to dispose of it and go get ready for school. Abiki hitches a ride on a passing bus because she missed hers, and she meets up with her friend Sarai and gets ready for class. But today, there's a new student in class, Makoto, master of the Renduken Martial Arts Dojo. The other students begin to laugh at her, and Makoto tells her that this is not a laughing matter. But then she goes to take her seat as the students continue to laugh. Later at lunch, Abiki and Sarai are talking about how weird that new martial arts girl is when they turn around to see Makoto yelling at another boy. She tells him to apologize to her or feel her wrath, and then he continues to taunt her, so she punches him in the face. But after knocking out the first boy, another boy shows up to jump Makoto, but he is stopped by one of Abiki's kanai. After lunch, Makoto runs up giving her back her kanai that she threw and informs Abiki that she can tell that she is a martial artist, probably a good one. So they're going to have to meet after school to see who the strongest martial artist is, and then Makoto walks away. After class, Abiki is sitting in a tree talking to Sarai on her phone, and Sarai asks if maybe she should call the police, but Abiki tells her just to head home, she has it covered. That's when above her, she notices the Geki Ninja. He grabs Abiki, but she vanishes in a puff of smoke, changing her clothes and jumping away. After kicking him in the back of his head, the Geki Ninja falls down in front of Makoto. When Makoto looks up to see Abiki in her ninja garb, all she can say is, holy crap, you're a ninja! And then the Geki Ninja begins to get up, but another ninja comes in, kicking him back down. Holy crap, another ninja! The new ninja tells Abiki that she is now safe, and that she needs to come with him. But Abiki tells him that she is only safe because she did all of the work. He just came in and finished it. The new ninja tells her that he'll explain later next time that they meet, and he jumps away. But Abiki wants answers now, so she ends up leaving Makoto. Abiki never managed to catch up, so she begins to think to herself how she needs to just get away from all of these crazy martial artists. Over in the Kenya wilderness, though, someone just got accepted to be a new exchange student in Japan. She she can't wait to fight those amazing martial artists. Later, Abiki watches Makoto as she changes, but when Makoto yells how she has no weaknesses, Abiki pops down to point out that she has a lot of blind spots. Makoto tries to attack Abiki, but she tells her that she isn't here for a fight, she just wants to be a normal girl. Abiki tells her how she made a promise to keep being a ninja a secret. Makoto begins to understand. Makoto tells her that she made a promise too, one to show the strength of her father's Rendoken style. So Makoto agreed to postpone their fight until Abiki is ready. As Abiki and Makoto begin to walk to class, they begin to see everyone gathering around the new exchange student, Elena. Elena tells everyone how she just traveled here to see Japan and meet other amazing warriors. And that's when a student tells Elena that they have their own warrior in this school already. So Elena hugs Makoto, asking to be her friend. Makoto begins to challenge her, but Abiki stops Makoto, telling her that class is about to start. While getting to class, Abiki tries to talk to Sarai, but Sarai tells her how she's just not as cool as her other martial artist friends, and Sarai storms off. The next day during lunch, Elena decides to sit with Abiki and Makoto so that she can learn from her fellow warriors. Makoto tells her that they should just fight, and she can learn all about her that way, but Elena tells her that they should just get along instead. After lunch, Abiki goes to check in on some of the universities that are recruiting when she notices one college that she is interested in also happens to be the same college that a cute guy that she's interested in is coming from. Abiki is then told by Enjo and Sanju that she needs to focus harder on her training as a ninja. So, for months, Abiki continues to struggle with both school and training. But one day, Abiki notices someone coming and she throws her kunais at her. Sarai came to tell her that she's sorry for getting so jealous over Abiki's new friends. Abiki tells her not to worry about it. The way she blocked those kunai, she just might be ninja material too, and the two of them walk off. Back home at the Glades, Enjo tells Abiki how impressed he is with both her completing of her training and passing her test, but she still has one more test. 
She must go train and challenge Oro. Abiki begins to train with Elena, but she can't shake what her masters told her. That task is impossible over and over and over. Later that night, she continues her training with Yuta, but Senju tells her that she needs to strike harder and she needs to focus. Focus? How can she focus? Nijitsu, schoolwork, exams, and defeat Oro? This is all too much and everyone just wants everything from her, so Abiki runs off. She wants to run away. She wants to get away from it all. So she begins to text Sarai that she needs a place to stay. She can't do this. No, she can. After debating it back and forth, she finally decides that she can. She just needs to focus. A few days later, Abiki and her friends begin their travel to meet Oro. Oro is among the greatest warriors. He travels all over the world to find new places to meditate, new warriors to battle. But he will almost always be found at Mount Otago, meditating. As Abiki begins to make her way to him, he notices her. Abiki begins to tell him her name and that she is here to challenge him. But Oro thought that maybe she came to ask him out for a date. Abiki begins to think that maybe she made a mistake, but Oro tells her that she is not mistaken. He is Oro, and he will continue to be for some time. At first, Oro tells Abiki that he has other important matters to attend to, so if they all went home now, would anyone care? Probably not, but he's bored, so he decides that he's going to fight them anyway. Oro assumes his stance, and the two begin their battle. But as they battle, Oro can't help but talk, and he continues to tell her how he's been so bored, and no one can impress him, even after binding one of his arms to make it harder. Nothing! He's always bored! He goes on to tell Abiki that she doesn't have the eyes of a killer. She's scared, but not running away. Show me your power. Show everyone! Abiki readies herself, and she releases a powerful blast, surprising everyone, including herself. Oro tells her that he thought about using both his hands. She did that good. Abiki then readies herself to continue the battle, but Oro tells her to stop, and he tells her that there is nothing more for her here. Her goal was to challenge Oro, and she did. As she goes back to her friends, Makoto steps in, challenging Oro, but he stops her, telling her that she has much anger inside, so perhaps another time. Everyone begins to travel home, but Makoto challenges Abiki again to see if she can possibly beat Abiki. Then she will be ready to face Oro. But before Makoto can even finish talking, a mysterious ninja appears, telling Abiki that the Geki are getting ready to attack. And that's when Annette falls and captures everyone. Elena tells them capturing them is not that honorable. Aren't they ashamed? But Abiki tells her that they are ninja, and this is kind of what they do. One Geki assassin tells her that they will bring Abiki back, and everyone else can be killed. But another assassin notices something about Makoto. She seems mad. Makoto begins to pull everyone in the net as she begins to punch along, and everyone begins to fight back through the net. When Abiki finally cuts the net free, Yuta comes in and saves everyone. Everyone starts to fight back until there is no one left, and that's when Abiki notices smoke and it's coming from the glades. Abiki's masters begin to fight off what they can until help arrives, and everyone begins to fight the Geki. Alpha Geki, the leader of the Geki, confronts Enjo for his betrayal as one of his men hold Abiki back hostage. The betrayal that the Alpha speaks of was a time 15 years ago when the Geki were small, but one of the most deadly of the ninja clans there ever was. One day they found an abandoned baby and they sought to train her without any impurities from the outside world. She would be the perfect assassin and everyone agreed, except one. Enjo would take the baby and burn the Geki village down to escape. Enjo then tells Alpha that they were given the choice to become ninja, so she too deserved that choice. Alpha then tells Enjo that it was to be destiny, and Enjo throws shurikens to free Abiki. Then Enjo and Alpha attack each other at the same time, with Enjo telling him that they make their own destiny. The building they were in explodes, but Abiki manages to get Enjo outside to safety. Enjo tells everyone that the leader is gone and this battle is over. They are all ninja, and they should not stay divided. A few weeks later, Abiki decides that it is time to leave the Glade, but she may continue to train as a ninja. Speaking of ninjas, poof! Everyone has come to say their goodbyes, including Don Chan the Raccoon! Abiki begins her first day at the university, and she's greeted by the cute guy from the school recruitment. He tells her that she should join their club, and when he takes her there, their club is a post-secondary ninja training club. And that cute guy, he was a mysterious ninja the whole time. But this is her life. She is a teenager, and she is a ninja. She's both at the same time. Months go by and Abiki is finally able to catch back up with Makoto and Elena. Elena tells her how much they missed her and Makoto asks if university's life has been taking up all of her time. Abiki tells her that it is something that she has to really devote herself to every day. And Makoto tells Abiki that this has probably all made her soft. But before Makoto finishes, Abiki changes her outfit telling her that she's ready. And there will finally be no more delays in their duel, except that is the end of our story. I hope you guys enjoyed this story. We do have a lot more Street Fighter comics to go through, but we are currently reading the Uncharted storyline and we are currently reading the Ratchet and Clank comic books. Those are coming out soon. Follow us on Twitter at EligibleMonster and don't forget to let us know what you thought about this comic in the comments down below. I'll see you guys next time right here.